So the way I like to start off with circular picking is I'll just choose three notes. Let's just go to the second string, 13th fret, C. So we'll start there at C. Then we're gonna go to the first string, 12th fret, E, and then first string, 15th fret, G. So that's just a C major triad. And if you had to pick it, we'd have to go like this. The reason that's a little bit awkward is because it's an odd number. So you'd be going down, up, down, and then starting over with an upstroke. So it can get a little bit uh, difficult to keep that up at a fast speed. So what you want to do instead is try circular picking. So what we'll do is we'll do a downstroke for the first two notes. So we'll go. Sounds like The Simpsons. A little bit. All right, let's go ahead and finish this off. So after we do the two downstrokes, we're going to do an upstroke for the G. Now the secret is, is once you do the upstroke at the end, you're already up here, so you're going to come back down and start over. So you get to always start with a downstroke, which is really nice. So let's start off with just these three notes. So we're going to go C, E, G, C, E, G over and over again. Ready, go. All right, so at first what we all tend to do is a full downstroke for the C, full downstroke for the E, then an upstroke for the G, right? This time, instead of going down pick, down pick, up pick, I just want you to go down, down, up. So we're going to melt the two downstrokes together, kind of like we're sweet picking, all right? Or strumming. We're just going right through the two strings with a downstroke. So we're going to go... So I just melted right through those two strings. Now I'm ready for the upstroke on the G. That's what creates the economy type picking, circular, because you're going to be going down, down, up, down, down, up in a very smooth way. Ready? Go. A lot smoother than if you went down, down, up. Even though that seems like a small thing, it's going to allow you to go a lot faster, a lot quicker. All right, so let's speed that up a little bit. Down, down, up, down, down, up. Remember, the two downstrokes melt together now. Here's a little tip. Leave the index finger down on the first string 12th fret as you do this, and then you could uh, really make this work at a fast speed without moving all your fingers all the time. All right, so remember, as you come off the first note with the downstroke, you have to lift it up the middle finger just a little bit to kill it. So you can't really see, but I'm lifting it off just enough to kill it. If I left it down, you'd get... And we don't want the two notes to ring out today, all right? It's a lot of fun to do. One other thing I'm doing that you might not notice is my picking hand. My palm is muting all the other strings that I'm not using. So I'm really just keeping those strings in check by keeping them uh, quiet by touching them just a little bit, allowing the highest two strings to still come through. That could take a little bit of practice to really get that down to an exact science. Now, if you could do that, I'm going to add one more thing to it to make it even more uh, exciting and then we're gonna move it around a little bit just to see in different situations how you could still do this so let's now this time when we do the upstroke on the highest note the G I want you to pull off back to the 12th fret of the first string which is E so you're gonna go like this now so you just plucked off I like to call pull offs pluck offs because it's like another picking of a note but it's really just your fretting finger so people think you could just lift off, but you can't really do that and get a lot of sound. See, it disappears. So you really got to pluck as you pull off. So that sounds like Woody Woodpecker to me. Okay, so anyway, everything sounds like something to me today. We're going to keep this going now with the pull off, and you're going to get four notes with very minimal effort. All right, so you can get a lot of speed out of this already, I'm sure, and still get quite a lot of attack out of the notes because you essentially are picking three of those notes. You're just doing it in a very economical fashion. So when I finally added this technique to my 13-year-old self and played Fade to Black, it made a lot more sense. So here's an example of where I would play in the solo when he goes. Imagine how difficult that would be if you had to pick all of those notes. I'm not saying it's bad to pick all the notes either. I'm just saying that this is a really good alternative if you just want to try something and speed up with less effort. So now that we have two ways to do this, just with the three notes and with a pull-off, 
Now we can just move it around to wherever we want and just experiment a little bit. So we are at C major, right? Let's try to do a progression with it. So let's go from C major to G major. So all you need to do here is move all the way back here to the eighth fret, which is G, and we're gonna go G, B, D. So it's gonna be the same shape and everything. Let's try it with just the three notes real quick. I'll try front pickup here. So we're gonna go from C to G. So we're following a chord progression now. This is exciting. Now let's move it up to the 10th fret, which is A, and we're gonna do an A minor triad. So we're gonna go A, C, E. So the frets will be 10th fret on the second string, then on the first string, eighth fret to 12th. So it's a bigger stretch, but it sounds really great. So now let's go from C to G to A minor. We might as well do the let it be progression. Let's go to the sixth fret of the second string and go back to our major triad shape. So we have C, G, A minor, F. Everyone loves that progression, so you might as well try it. All right, now let's do it with a pull-offs. I'm gonna go to my treble pickup and uh, give it a go. So have somebody in the background or record yourself playing the chord C, G, A minor, F, and then play that over the top of it. I think you'll be uh, pleasantly surprised at how that turns out. All right, before I end the video, what I wanna do is I also wanna show you that you could start with the highest note of the triad in this case, and it'll sound like this. So it's just another way of doing it. It seems backwards, but you're just starting with the highest note and going right to the pull off right away, and then the double down strokes. So some people like to start with an upstroke on this. That's what I did for a long time. But whenever I start a phrase, I really love the feeling of starting with a downstroke. So sometimes you'll see me actually do a downstroke and then do the double downstroke and then an upstroke. So it seems a little bit uh, mixed up, but that's just how I do it. See how I still did it the same after the first initial downstroke? But it's up to you guys. If you wanna just start with an upstroke, that works too. Or my way, starting with a downstroke in each one. So you can see they both work. All right, so if you guys just experiment with this idea and play around with it a little bit, you're gonna start to be able to expand it into other things, doing more pull-offs if you want to. That's gonna open up to you. Uh, some sweet picking ideas will start to come into play. And we're gonna do all that stuff on the website, okay? So if you like the way this technique worked out for you, go ahead and go to theartofguitar.com because we're gonna be doing a whole series on circular picking. And I'm excited about that because it's such a big part of my playing that I love sharing it with you guys. And it seems to help a lot of people. Okay guys, uh, have fun with that and we'll catch you at the next lesson. Thanks, bye.